All right, here we go. Sci-Fi Express Lane. Kind of been a while. Um, I don't know what's going on. I had some 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 death in my in my area. You know, family, not family, uh, friends and students. You know, so it's not the best the best feeling. Anyway, um, maybe that's been occupy my my head space. So um, today I'm going to talk about like why religion is used in science fiction stories um, or how religion is used in science fiction stories. This came up when I was having a conversation with somebody uh, about, um, I guess, African religions in science fiction stories and, and um, I guess all of that, you know, because the answer and the conversation went a lot of places. And kind of my opinion on it, again, I can only really speak from how I use it and, and, and kind of how I perceive it, because I haven't really sat down with a bunch of different writers and asked them specifically. And I think some of them, other, some writers, you probably won't even get a real answer. So here's my answer. One, um, science, I mean, religion has been, not religion, let's say Christianity, has been beat up by Christians itself. Um, you know, you had separation from the Roman Catholic Church by Martin Luther's um, um, poems, who was like hating on Catholic, Roman Catholic Church, and that, that is, um, uh, what do you call it, what gave birth to the Protestant religion. Then you had um, Seventh Day Adventists and and Jehovah Witness kind of separating over um, which day the Sabbath you know should be, which day should you worship. Um, then you have Baptists and Methodists separating over baptizing, submerging, or sprinkling. And I mean, those are just like the rumors kind of that I heard. I ain't even a religious scholar, but. I think because of the amount of denominations that we have in Christianity, it causes a science fiction writer, maybe like an L. Ron Hubbard, to take a liberty and take a stab at creating their own version of Christianity in their uh, books. Um, I think, I guess, why? Um, because you always have to have a theology. Everything can't be, um, I guess, made up. Uh, 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 you know, a theology or religious religion in your story gives the reader something to connect to in terms of the motives, the motives behind the characters, especially if it's um, similar to Christianity and you just tweak one or two things, right? Because science fiction is at its best is a what if. So if you tweak one or two things, you say, what if the Sabbath was on a Wednesday? What if, you know, whatever, whatever, whatever the what if is, you go in on it. Um, I think that's cool. Um, I think because Christianity has so many denominations, people are not sensitive or defensive about the principles of Christianity. I mean, you have some devout people that probably would be like, yo, you can't do that to my savior. Or yeah, you could say that. But there's real people that do different things. You know, there's real devil worshipers. There's real cults of Satan. So you don't put that in a story. You're not really, you know, um, the first to be blasphemous, right? You're not even the only in this time period. So, you know, um, that's... I think, uh, what do you call it? I'm trying to get this lens on me. Um, so that's what I think the challenge, you know, that's what allows Christianity to sort of have tough skin. And because Christianity has such tough skin, when it comes to other religions, like African religions in particular, um, black people get defensive. Black people think it's racism. And it probably is elements of racism thrown in there because, you know, they want to hate on Africa in general. 
you know, so it's quick to make them look like Africans, have them eating each other and all types of nasty religious practices. But that goes on, you know. Um, I think when it comes to Hinduism and, and um, Confucius, they are so much of a philosophy as a particular set of tenets that um, you can't even tell what it is if, you know, you have to be actual, you know, the tenets of Buddha to, to be able to offend that belief system, you know, because it's really a lot of it is interpretation. So if you interpret it different, you just got a person who's prophetic in your story and people follow their um, beliefs and stuff. Um, so that's the thing. And then Islam, I don't know why Islam, um, people that are Muslim don't necessarily get as offended as black people do when they come for African religion. Um, I think again, Islam is what it is. It's comfortable in its identity. It's damn near pop, more popular and practiced in Christianity. So it's, a com it's in its comfort zone. I think what makes African religions and spiritualities so sensitive, or uh, black people so sensitive about them, is that they've been hated on so much that um, anything that paints them in the negative you know, triggers them. You know, same thing with, with uh, Vudun, right? You know, um, the difference with, with Vudun is, or um, the Haitian um, spirituality, is that, you know, Haitians got a lot of other things on their on they plate. You know, when they get to the posi position and, and population in Americas as African Americans, and it may change things, but you know, um, I think sometimes with them and, and, and probably indigenous Americans, that there really aren't even enough of them to um, to create a, a response, a disturbance. You know, um, I think when it comes to Asians, I think they probably look at it as misrepresenting Asians in general. So it's not just a um, misrepresentation of their spirituality. I think they just interpret it as a misrepresentation of, of them, their people in general. So um, I don't know. I, I think that, you know, in terms of being sensitive. Now, in terms of why it's done, um, of course, you need something in your story. It's, you know, Americans and Christians in general cannot really imagine a world where there isn't some type of worship deity. You know, um, when you talk to people that are indigenous American and, and African, you may run into somebody that just says, you know, these are not worshipped uh, deities. They're just deities. They're just entities. It's an interpretation. You say God of the trees. We just say, yeah, we call tree a her. You know what I'm saying? It's no God. What does that God mean? You're giving it so much power, but you don't really give it that much power. So when it comes to, um, and I say some people, right? Because I know some people, and I know people that say different things about these religions and spiritualities. But when it comes to, um, I guess, making up something, I think why Christians go at African religions is because um, it's a starch contrast to having a God in the sky belief. Um, and they're so fascinating. I think that's another reason. I think it's just very fascinating. Um, I also think that it's hard to create something totally different. Most things that are created are um, versions of things that already exist. And creating a different type of religion is hard. And I, oh, excuse me. I think um, 
it's unnecessarily hard for some people if it's not really about the story. Um, I think of, uh, oh God, I want to say Octavia Butler, but there was another female writer, can't remember her name, uh, a white writer who used music in their theology, you know, musical notes. And um, that was really different. And then Octavia Butler, um, I don't know if it's in more than one book, but um, in the Parable of Sour, she has a, uh, a, 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 a organic or not organic, um, a um, natural um, religion, you know. Um, and it's interesting just to read how she puts that in there, you know, how she um, weaves it into the story. But again, these are uh, flushed out religions because they are intricate to the story. And it's like a character. So um, for other stories that just, you know, have different characters or different variations, they may just say, oh, that's the religion, but they may not get into it because it's not that important to the story. The story's not about that. So, it, you know, unless it calls for it, sometimes, you know, you're not going to see nothing but a, oh, different deity and variated practices around that deity. So that's it. You know, I, I again, I was asked this question. We was talking about it. Uh, Maybe I'll give you an example of like one of mine, right? So in Planet Kibbalan, haven't really flushed out the name of the religion because some religions didn't have names. I don't even think Buddhism had a name. They just listened to Buddha, right? So some religions or spiritualities don't have names. So there's nothing wrong with that. So in my Planet of Kibbalan, the king is um, anointed by the people and the elders. But the king is not exalted. It's not a high level position. It's a high responsibility position and by that design is high. But the person is treated, treated, treated like a commoner. You know, um, not hated or disrespected, you know, but they certainly don't live in a castle. They don't have servants. They have guards, but they don't have them with servants. The king and the queen, right? And then, uh, so you might serve the king a cup of coffee in line at a Starbucks as opposed to having their own Starbucks brought to them and living like some big Michael Jackson, Liberace celebrity, you know? So um, that's that's how I get down in um, Planet Kibbalan. Now, um, is there, Planet of Kibbalan is my story where there's a variety of, of, of worlds. Um, it's the birthplace for all species. So kind of every kind of species that has inhabited the universe has come from Planet of Kibbalan. And Planet of Kibbalan is very diverse in that regard. So I've, I've had characters or um, different cultural practices but I really haven't had um, a, a named religions in it. And that, I'll, I'll have to think about that. But anyway, um, I have not created my own religion or spirituality other than just the different practices in um, Planet Kivalon. But that's it. Um, let me just say. So uh, I, I just guess. I don't know. I think I will talk to some people about it. I'll be able to respond. they probably give me some deeper answers. But I definitely think that um, Christianity is a go-to base for Western writers, you know, um, because it's a language, it's a religion that people understand. And it's been modified, so it has tough skin. All right, um, that's it. Hopefully I answered the question. And we talked about, I talked about it enough. Um, remember, like, subscribe, share, and comment. Peace. Sci-Fi Express Lane, Jeff Carroll.